Hey there, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph, and I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. So it's our series today, episode number 42 from 2005. A couple of uh, pretty good people today. Just wanted to apologize first. I know this video was supposed to come out Sunday morning, but friends and family showed up and there was no time to record. So I'm recording it now for tomorrow morning. The two people I chose were Keith Knudsen of the Doobie Brothers. We're having some Doobie Brothers today. And of course, um, the other one was Carlo Little. Uh, who had some connections to the Rolling Stones. So we'll be doing Nudson first since the Doobie Brother died first. And that's the way we do it. Past first, go first type of thing. And then of course we'll do our honorable mentions too. So, the vitals. Um, Keith Nudson, of course, was a Doobie Brother. It came about their fifth or sixth album, I believe. I think it was their sixth album. Um, he was... I know I have my glasses. thought I had them beside me, but apparently I did not. So we're going to need that because I'm a little on the old side. <laughs> okay, so he was he uh, was born February the 18th, 1948 in Lamars, Iowa, USA, and died February the 8th. Oh, sorry. February the 18th, he was born. February the 8th, 2005, at the age of 56, he died in Kentfield, California, USA. Uh, music was rock, country, rock, and southern rock. And he played the drums and vocals, of course. I think both the people today are drummers. No surprise coming from me. Okay, he, uh, he learned to play the drums while in high school and graduated in 1966. First band he was in was called the Blind Joe Metal Bomb Blues Band. And then after that, he recorded in 1973 with the Hoodoo Rhythm Section and Johnny Winter. In 1974, he was invited to join the Doobie Brothers, uh, replacing Hosack. Um, in 1970, uh, from 1974 till 82, he was a member of the band before they disbanded. Um, his vocals played a bigger part with the band than his actual drumming did. He played more vocals than drumming because the Doobies are known for their dual drummers. Um, usually a five to six member band. Sometimes they've had as many as nine people in the band. And But he's been in the band from that period of time. Um, after that, the band, like I said, the band broke up and he and fellow doobie John McVie formed a country rock band called the Southern South Pacific. The two men formed a writing duo and continued to do that and to today, or up until he died anyways. The primarily the background vocalist, and I don't think he did any lead parts, I don't remember him doing that, but he was a background vocalist and, you know, as if you've listened to the doobies, you know that... The band has a lot of singing. It's a very harmony-oriented harmony band. Um, and then, of course, he died of pneumonia in 2005. Okay, so, sorry, I'm looking at me a little bit tired now, but... Anyways, Nudson was a good, pretty good drummer. Um, I don't really think of the Doobies as being an instrumental band, although they are. They're all pretty talented instrumentally. But primarily, I think of them as a country blues kind of rock band with a lot of really, really good harmonies and a lot of really, really solid songs. Some of their songs, I think, are among the my favorite singing songs when I'm in the shower. China Grove, of course. Listen to the music. Jesus is just all right with me. You know. All these songs are just really good. Or Oh Black Water. I like that song too. There's just endless supply of Doobie Brothers stuff to listen to. Um, you know, one I think one of the great kind of poppy bands of uh, the 1970s 
with some really great music, you know, and uh, lots of people in the band, you know, just love the band. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Nothing more to say about it than that. Um, I dig all their early stuff quite a bit. Uh, some of the later stuff I have, uh, a couple of later albums, I'm not as crazy about them. But, you know, still, it's the Doobie Brothers, what can you say? Okay, so uh, the second guy we're going to do today, a um, little bit different. He's not as well known, of course, but he had, he, he touched, he touched in that area of music in Britain to a lot of people who became famous. He himself didn't really make it, but he was right there in all those scenarios. He could have had a shot at a few different scenarios, but... You no, know, it just wasn't meant to be. Talking about Carlo Little. Born December the 17th, 1938, in Shepherd's Bush, London, England. He died August the 6th, 2005, at the age of 66, in Cleden, Tin and Weiner, England. Um, of course, rock blues music was his, was his um, rock and rock blues was his music of choice. He was a drummer again. Active from 1960 to 2002. Okay, so he grew up in Wembley, Middlesex. Uh, his fellow townsmen, these are people that grew up in the same town with him, included um, uh, Charlie Watts, uh, Keith Moon, uh, Ginger Baker, some really good drummers from that township, I'll say. Um, anyways, uh, he had a he started playing skiffle, which was kind of a music that was predates uh, rock music in in um, England, anyways. And then he became a fan of Chuck Berry and Little Richard because the American rock thing just exploded in the late fifties, and he became a big fan of that. Um, after this, after his service for the country, after he was out of the army service, he uh, formed a band with. Uh, David Such called the Savages, played with them for a bit. Next, he played with uh, Cyril Davis All Stars, and then he had a session or two with the Stones, and was asked by Brian Jones to join the Rolling Stones as their drummer. But I'm not sure exactly what happened. It wasn't really clear, but it looks like Charlie Watts ended up with the job and ended up taking over um, as a permanent member of the band. Um, he gave Keith Moon some of his first drum lessons. Um, what else did he do? Oh, he, in, at some point, he had a tryout with Deep Purple, but he ended up choosing to join the Hurricanes and said, so he's had a couple of shots here getting in with some big name bands, and it just, for some, for some reason, it just ended up not happening. Um, he did write an album. He recorded an album called Never Stop Rockin', uh, which was by the Carlo Little All-Stars, which featured um, Ron Wood, Jeff Beck, Long John Baldry, Matt Fisher, uh, and the Chantel Sisters all played on this album. But the album was not released. They held it off. It ended up being released after his death, which was in 2005, and, and it was released January the 2009, so he never got to see how this album did uh, because he died of lung cancer shortly, uh, be short, uh, in the middle of this year of 2005. So I didn't know much about this guy, but I thought, you know, anybody who was, who was um, going to play with the Rolling Stones had to be an interesting character, if nothing else. So I chose him. And, you know, the guy, he had a life of interest, you know. He, he did a lot of drumming for a lot of different people. And had his shot a couple times, with first with the Stones and then later with the Purple. So it's not like he didn't get a shot. Um, you can't really ask for more than that. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes um, you don't fit quite in with the band or sometimes um, something else happens and you end up not playing for them. He was considered a very heavy, loud drummer. So um, maybe he didn't fit into the Stones for that reason because Charlie Watch 
uh, had a certain style that suited the stones perfectly. And um, Ian Pace, of course, uh, has a similar type of setup and arrangement with uh, Deep Purple. He is a good drummer, but he's not particularly, uh, they're not particularly loud. Um, a lot of drummers and maybe perhaps this guy might have fit in better with Led Zeppelin but he never got a chance for that one so anyways uh, Carlo Little um, basically he's known I guess fame wise for um, just being in different bands throughout his career you know so there you have it um, our series look back to f rock musicians who thrilled us but have since passed on this was episode number 42 from 2005 again i apologize that it didn't come out in the morning today the weekends are somewhat difficult sometimes i can do it right away like i did yesterday got it out a little bit late but not too bad other times i just don't get to work on it it's now like closing in on midnight here and i'm still not finished this video however that is it's done and you're getting to see it you'll see it tomorrow morning on monday and then we'll do uh tuesdays we'll do that monday night and get that out on tuesday because i don't get bothered as much during the week it's just easier on me so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like and subscribe um i am working on plans to do a live um video i'm hoping that this weekend will be the one if it's going to be this weekend coming, then I will let you know by Wednesday on the Wednesday Night Favorites uh, episode. And if it's going to be after that, I'll let you know at that time as well. So I'm hoping to do a Saturday afternoon, like around noon, and do a live video. I'm going to attempt to. I have to speak with my coordinator, also known as my daughter. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll see what we can do about getting that out, uh, out there. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, like, subscribe, give comments about what you know about these two. I don't know as much about Carlo Little as I had hoped to. A little, little bit more about Knudsen because I like the Doobie Brothers quite a bit. So anyways, you have a good day and I will see you soon. Prog Monster. Goodbye.